none of the laws that I signed this past session had any intersection with this crime at all. No, no law that I signed allowed him to get a gun, the gun that he did get. Do we expect laws to come out of this devastating crime? The answer is absolutely yes. And joining me now, Congresswoman Beth Van Dyne, who represents Texas, and we appreciate you for being with us this Saturday night, Congresswoman. Thank you very much. And uh, we spoke this week earlier on John Bachman Now as we saw the story develop and um, sheer horror learning this new updated timeline. Can I first get your reaction to now the fact that these children may have been in this classroom for more than 40 minutes before there was an entry? I mean, look, we're, we're I, I'm horrified, I think, as the rest of the country is, especially the, the community of Uvalde right now that's having to live through this. Um, you know, I, and I'm sure those those uh, law enforcement officers, they are part of the community. They are grieving as well. It, it, it is horrific, that timeline. I can't even imagine being a parent right now. And, yeah. It, and it, it, of your kid not being able to go into that school. A lot has been focused, obviously, on now the response, but also Governor Abbott um, had held that press conference really less than 24 hours after uh, the massacre, kind of a, a governing moment, not really a campaign event, Beth. And then we saw Beto O'Rourke interrupting um, the governor, even pointing a finger at him. It sort of has been this viral clip we want to share again for our viewers. Sir, you're out of line. I can't so. believe you're a sick son of a would come to a deal like this to make a political issue. Of course, uh, he's running against Abbott and had no problem sort of trying to steal the, the moment there. But, you know, we want to get your reaction because it was a reporter, Drew Hernandez, Congresswoman. He actually confronted Beto, who's been outside the NRA Houston conference, and a little bit of a subdued reaction when he was called out for his action. Let's take a look. Thank you, brother. Hey, Beto. Hey, how do you feel exploiting dead kids? How do you feel exploiting dead kids, Beto? Do you care? The parents in Uvalde said they didn't want you there. The parents in Uvalde said they didn't want you there, Beto. What do you say to the parents I talked to yesterday in Uvalde that said they didn't want you there? They didn't want you to do that, Beto. They didn't want you to exploit dead kids, Beto. Congresswoman, what do you make there when sort of the reality of his outbursts and actions are now uh, being, um, you know, put into the spotlight? Not so much of a great move by Beto. This is a crisis and he's not letting it go to waste. This is the worst a politician can possibly do. He's taking this horrific grief stricken community and parents and making it all about him. He's desperate, as are a lot of the Democrats coming up in November, and they're trying to get whatever kind of talking points they can be. He knew cameras were going to be there. He knew the world was focused on what was happening at that moment, and he exploited it. Congressman, it, 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 Congresswoman Van Dyne, we appreciate it. We know that um, you're in touch with a lot of the folks in Texas, and so many prayers are pouring in as that community tries to heal. It will be very difficult and um, hard for those families as we watch the next few weeks and funerals that will be planned. Just awful. Thank you for joining us today here on Newsmax. Thank you very much. You have a great day.